Today, we're going to break down the differences and similarities between two absolutely incredible dog breeds with interesting histories, the Newfoundland and the Labrador. Welcome back to the Femre and Newfoundland show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviourist and I'm the founder here at FemreCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could ever want to know about the Newfoundland, then how you can become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Newfoundland companions. So if you love the Newfoundland as much as we do, start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a Newfoundland video. So then, let's dive into today's video and we'll compare two breeds originating from the same place and what you should consider when choosing which one might be the perfect canine companion for you and for your home. It is amazing that two breeds originating from the same area can turn out so different, although their first use was also incredibly similar. The Newfoundland Dog and the Labrador Retriever both originate from the Newfoundland Island, where both breeds were used by fishermen as aids in their fishing adventures. Both breeds spent time in water catching fish nets, but where the Newfoundland turned out to excel is saving people in distress. The lab turned out to be amazing at catching fish and retrieving it in his mouth, bringing it back to his master. But that was, to be fair, a long time ago, and if you want to know more details about the history of these dogs, please check our videos on their deep dive into their fascinating histories on here for the Newfoundland show, or you can go and check out the Labradors on the Labrador channel. Now, these days, Newfoundlands are more of a pet dog rather than a working dog, but they do love to work. In many countries, there are trials for water work, but the Newfoundland also enjoys tasks like pulling a cart with a child in just for going out for a fun walk. Now, the Labrador Retriever, on the other hand, is a gun or a sporting dog. With their soft mouths, they are amazing at retrieving dead game back to their hunter without causing any damage to it. They also excel at other tasks like nose work for the military or police. They work as service or assistance dogs for physically impaired or blind people. And they are amazing at search and rescue and drug and bomb detection. Now, the Newfoundland is the bigger of these two breeds, but this is by no means an inclination that the Labrador is a small dog. On the contrary, the Labrador is considered a large dog, while the Newfie is amongst the giant breeds, and they can reach up to 28 inches, while the Labrador grows to around 24 inches. A Newfoundland can weigh up to 150 pounds, while the Labrador will come in at upwards of 80 pounds. So there is quite the difference between the two. What you may want to take extra care of with the Labrador, though, is his weight. They tend to enjoy their food a bit too much, so make sure your lab doesn't get obese since this really does affect their general health and, in particular, their joints. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behaviour cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. Now where the Newfoundland wins in sheer size, the lab excels in energy levels. He's the kind of dog who likes to stay busy and entertained for the majority of the day. He needs his physical exercise and playing ball in the backyard usually won't cut it. He needs long walks with structure, preferably several times a day. On top of that, he also loves to play, especially retrieval games if he doesn't have the chance to retrieve during hunts. To spend his needs for mental challenges, you might want to engage in canine sports like agility, rally obedience, dock diving, or field and retrieval work. Now, the Newfoundland, on the other hand, is much more of a laid-back dog. Due to their size, they shouldn't be put through too much heavy exercise, especially when young, but they are quite happy with a long walk in the forest or a nice swim around your area. Both of these breeds are loving, friendly, sweet, and just fantastic. None of them are the typical guard dog, but due to the size of them, especially if they are barking, should be quite enough to keep most unwanted visitors from trying in the first place. Both of these breeds are considered excellent with children, and the Newfoundland is lovingly called the nanny dog, and with their calmness, they are amazing with children of any size and age, although obviously you need to always be careful, especially with very young children. The lab might be better with older children as their energy and wagging tails can fill the air, and toddlers, again, may go flying even if it's just by accident. 
Now, in general, there's no limits to their love for children, though. What needs to be remembered, no matter of the breed or age of children, is that any time spent between the dog and child should be supervised to avoid those accidents or the dog getting tired of relentless children and then feeling the need like they need to correct the child, even if it's very dog-like and what might not be too dangerous if they're growling or even nipping, it's just not a good situation to find yourself in. Now, supervision of strict rules for both the dog and for the children are part of having a healthy, wonderful life together. Both these breeds are intelligent and easy to train. They are loving and eager to please their people, but perhaps the lab beats the Newfoundland in this matter. He is considered to be one of the most intelligent breeds on the planet, after all. That being said, the Newfoundland is far from stupid, but he may just be a tad more independent than the lab who, due to his hunting ability, needs to work very closely with his person and will do anything for them. So then, I hope you enjoyed that quick breakdown of these two incredible breeds with fascinating and similar histories, but broke off to become their own fantastic and loving dogs. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell as we've got two dedicated videos coming here to this channel every single week. And I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Newfoundland Show.